Is the webcam working now? Well, it's, yeah, now it does. Okay. All right, I think we can get started, so please go ahead. Okay, so yeah, in this talk, I'm going to uh, describe the problems we have in the Linux kernel uh, regarding the way we handle the TOS uh, field in IP packets. Um, so um, the main problem we have is that uh, we handle the TOS in somewhat inconsistent ways. And because of that, regressions are introduced uh, every now and then. Um, some corner cases are still needing to, to be fixed. And it happens that, uh, I think it was six months or nine months ago, uh, some uh, risky patches were proposed upstream uh, to extend the functionalities. So it would be good to fix everything because before uh, we get more risky patches. So first, let's have a short look about uh, the history of this field. It was uh, defined first uh, in RFC 791 uh, as a 3-bit field. That's the T-bits here. Uh, so that's the original IPv4 uh, RFC. And then it was extended and modified again uh, with uh, incompatible uh, interpretation. For example, in RFC 1122, uh, it was extended to a 5 bits field. And afterwards, uh, the lower order bits was finally reserved. And with the introduction of the SCP, uh, another uh, lower order bit uh, was reserved. And those two bits were finally uh, repurposed uh, for explicit congestion notification. In IPv6, we also have um, conflicting interpretation. Uh, the original specification defined the four bits field. And again, it was extended uh, this time to eight bits. And finally, the SCP uh, reserved the last two bits, uh, which were finally repurposed for ECN. So now we have um, a stable interpretation, like in the last 20 years, uh, the definition of the TOS field hasn't changed. And the nice thing is that uh, it's the same now for IPv4 and IPv6. However, uh, the Networking stack uh, was implemented before uh, ECN and uh, the SCP. So with all those conflicting interpretation, uh, of course, we have a, a pretty messy implementation. So for example, in the IPv4 code, uh, we ignore the ECN bits when we try to match the TOS. Uh, but the IPv6 code doesn't ignore them. So that means that depending on the ECN values, IPv6 uh, might treat uh, packets differently, uh, even though the TOS is the same, but uh, because of the difference in ECN bits. <clears throat> uh, for the higher order bits, uh, IPv4 ignores them. Well, most of the time. Uh, because some parts of the code uh, takes them into account. Uh, IPv6 is more consistent. It always takes all the bits into account when it matches the TOS. And uh, another uh, effect of uh, this, um, how to say, messy implementation is that uh, we can accept uh, TOS values, for example, with IP root or IP rules. Uh, that cannot actually match any packet. Uh, I will give some examples later. So the reason for um, all those different interpretation is mainly because uh, of the use of uh, two different masks uh, in the IPv4 code. Uh, there is first RTTOS, which is used very widely uh, in the IPv4 uh, code base. Uh, 
Um, so this mask uh, clears the high order bits and it also clears one of the ECN bits, but only one of them. Uh, however, uh, most of the routing code uh, will apply another mask, uh, which will clear both uh, ECN bits. So RTTOS actually doesn't really make any sense because every time we uh, do a route lookup, uh, even if uh, the caller uh, masks the, the TOS uh, with the RTTOS macro, uh, the routing code uh, will mask the TOS again uh, to clear the ECN bits. In IPv6, the situation is uh, very different. Uh, we normally don't mask the TOS at all. Uh, but probably because of uh, copy pasting code, uh, there are some occurrence of this RTTOS macro that spreads into uh, the IPv6 code base uh, where it just doesn't make any sense. So there are user visible uh, consequences. Uh, for example, in the past we had bugs uh, where RP route get uh, wouldn't return uh, the proper route. Uh, we would have different, uh, a real packet would take uh, a different route uh, than what uh, IP root get would return. We had some regression in VXLAN uh, due to the way we handled the toss because uh, some uh, fixes uh, changed the way, changed the mask uh, of the toss in the VXLAN code. Uh, we had problem with source address selection and we had, yeah, more problem, uh, for example, with uh, the early DMX, I think. Uh, and there's, so these problems have been solved, uh, but yeah, there are the more fundamental problems that remains. Uh, for example, uh, the inconsistent handling of the high order DSCP bits, uh, especially in IPv4. Of course, we have a different behavior between IPv4 and IPv6, and we have the problem of risky patches uh, that uh, have been posted. Um, and yeah, sometimes maybe we will uh, mistakenly apply uh, that kind of thing. So just some examples of uh, the practical problems or uh, surprising behaviors uh, that uh, we can encounter. Uh, let's try to do use IP route and define a route uh, with TOS1. Uh, this is accepted, but if we try to route a packet uh, with TOS1, uh, the route will not be found uh, because TOS1 actually sets uh, an ECN bit. And as I said, uh, the ECN bits are cleared uh, before doing the TOS comparison. Um, so yeah, let's try with TOS4. Uh, this is a bit that uh, is defined for or every in every RFC. So no matter the interpretation of the TOS, uh, it's a valid TOS. So that works. Uh, if we have a packet with TOS4, it will take this route, no problem. Uh, something that might surprise some users is that uh, this route will also match uh, packets with TOS E4 uh, because uh, E4 uh, will be uh, the E part of E4 uh, will be masked uh, by, the, um, um, by the IPv4 routing code uh, because that's the high order DSCP bits. So yeah, we can uh, match uh, packets with TOS E4 uh, by using just TOS4. But if we try uh, to explicitly match TOS E4, well, actually <laughs> we won't match it at all. Again, uh, because of the masks that is applied uh, before routing IPv4 packets. And with IP rules, we have uh, slightly different behaviors. Uh, if we try to use TOS1, uh, this time the, the command is rejected. But if we try with TOS2, 
uh, the command is accepted, even though it's another ECN bit. And we have the same problem uh, as with the IP route um, with TOS1, uh, that is, uh, no packet will actually match this rule uh, because of the way IPv4 uh, clears the ECN bits before doing the lookup. Um, with TOS4, we have the exact same behavior uh, as we had uh, with, IP route, with IP route. And if we try to set uh, the high order bits, uh, the command is rejected. With IPv6, we have yet uh, different behavior. Uh, IP route with IPv6 uh, just ignores the TOS parameter. So, yeah, at least uh, it's consistent. <laughs> we can provide whatever toss we want. Uh, it's never applied. Uh, with IP rule, uh, the toss is accepted, of course, uh, and we can use uh, any value, uh, even ECN bits, uh, if we want. So, I don't know if there's a use case for um, uh, for matching the ECN bits uh, with IP rule, but uh, it's probably dangerous uh, as a um, network administrator who doesn't know much about uh, TOS and DSCP and ECN uh, might try to uh, match um, or to use uh, TOS1 and have some uh, special handling for it and finally mess or break ECN uh, without even realizing. So what can we do? Um, yeah, first we can fix uh, the obvious bugs, like the use of RTTOS in IPv6 and fix the few places in the RPv4 stack uh, that doesn't match the ECN bits uh, before matching the TOS. We can also probably uh, remove most of the RTTOS calls uh, because, uh, as I said earlier, uh, we generally will uh, apply a stricter mask uh, before doing the route lookup. And there's the long-term uh, fixes uh, or try, uh, things we could do to address uh, the, uh, the fundamental problems. So, and this is where, uh, this is why uh, I started with this talk. Actually, uh, it would be good if we could define the behavior that we expect uh, from the toss. Uh, like with the previous IP routes and IP rule commands, uh, should we configure them, uh, consider them as uh, established behaviors that we don't want to change? Or is that bugs or are some of them uh, bugs that we need to fix. And once we uh, settle on a precise, implement, precise uh, interpretation of the TOS field uh, for the Linux kernel, then we can rework some internal code uh, to minimize uh, the chance of uh, introducing more regressions in the future. I could think of two possible options for this. Uh, one would be to define a DSCP type. Um, so, for example, it would ensure that uh, the ECN bits uh, have been masked and sparse could warn uh, when it's, uh, the DSCP is um, uh, not, um, is mixed, for example, with uh, unsigned integers. gears. Another option, uh, a bit more involved, is to change the way or to extend the way we configure the TOS uh, in IP route and IP rules and uh, also models that happen to use the TOS. Uh, so we could ex extend the TOS configuration by adding a mask. So um, instead of having an implicit mask for IPv4 and another one for IPv6 and actually having even different uh, implicit masks, uh, depending on uh, which part of the IPv4 stack we are running. Uh, we would, in the route or in the IP rule, uh, have the possibility uh, to define uh, which mask to apply uh, before 
uh, comparing the toss. Potentially, uh, we could allow the ECN bits uh, in the mask so, so that we would keep uh, the current MPV city behavior. So in practice, uh, option one would look like this, uh, a new DSCP, uh, a DSCP uh, type um, for, so that uh, Sparse could warn uh, about it when it's compared or assigned to uh, also the different types. And a couple of helper uh, functions uh, to uh, convert between uh, plain integer uh, to DSCP and uh, the other way around. And of course, uh, when we take an integer and convert to DSCP, we would, would apply the mask. There are a few drawbacks to uh, this approach. Uh, the first is uh, all the code churn because uh, TOS is really used in many, many places. So, for example, it's not only about uh, core routing, but it's also all sorts of tunnels, uh, VRFs, uh, some networking drivers, uh, BB, BPF helpers, etc. Some higher level protocols like uh, SCTP. Um, also, sparse warnings can go unnoticed, uh, and we have many uh, files in the networking tree that are not sparse clean. Uh, Maybe patchwork could help uh, by flagging patches that add sparse warnings, uh, but I'm not sure if we have a policy about that. Um, that also means that uh, we would have uh, we wouldn't have uh, much flexibility. Uh, so we would have to define uh, what is the mask that we want to apply, uh, and that would be set in stone. So, yeah, do we want to allow the full DSCP range or do we want to keep the current behavior, uh, which is to mask the high order uh, DSCP bits? And what about IPv6? Uh, IPv6 uh, currently doesn't mask anything. So if we don't want to change the behavior of IPv6, uh, we couldn't use the DSCP type for it. Uh, that might not be a problem, uh, but uh, that also means that uh, for code that's, that is supposed to handle both IPv4 and IPv6, we couldn't use the DSCP type. So there's the option two, which is more flexible. Uh, so again, we could define a new uh, a new type uh, for it, uh, which would contain uh, the toss value and the toss mask, and then we could extend uh, the different uh, interfaces uh, to the configuration. For example, here with IP rule, we could set uh, the toss value and then the toss mask. Um, so, yeah, with this, we could allow uh, using the whole DSCP range uh, for users who want it. If we want to keep the original behavior where the high order bits are uh, cleared by default, uh, we could use a default value uh, that uh, does this. So that, yeah, quite a lot of flexibility and we could use different masks uh, for IPv4 and IPv6 uh, to keep uh, the same behavior by default. There are a few drawbacks to this approach too. Uh, first, it's a bit more involved uh, than the option one, uh, especially because we have to modify code uh, deep into uh, how FIB lookups are, are done. Um, so it's a little bit more risky. Uh, and that would introduce uh, some uh, interesting problems. Uh, like now, for example, uh, we one packet could match uh, several routes and there wouldn't be a route uh, that is more specific than the other. Uh, so for example, uh, if we have uh, this 
TOS and a packet uh, with TOS 50, uh, which route uh, should we return? So um, yeah, we could use some arbitrary rules or we could say that, okay, the first match wins or something like that. But yeah, it's not as natural as a uh, longest prefix match or something like this. Also, uh, we have the problem of uh, wildcards. Uh, for example, if we have uh, a user that or that sets uh, mask zero, but uh, with um, a, a, a toss value of zero and the mask that is not zero, is that a wildcard or not? And what about the default mask? Uh, if it's zero with the default mask, uh, um, normally it should be wildcard because that's the way uh, it works. But on the other hand, uh, it would make sense to actually uh, allow uh, a toss of zero and a different, um, a non-zero mask uh, to work. And finally, uh, is it worth the? Is it worth it? Uh, are people really going to use a toss with a non-default mask? Um, yeah, it would be annoying to um, add uh, this kind of flexibility and complexify the code uh, if it's uh, not used by anyone. So, uh, conclusion. Um, ideally, we would have uh, full support for uh, IPv4 and also IPv6 and we wouldn't break ECN uh, because of uh, invalid configuration of the TOS and have consistent behavior across IPv4 and IPv6. Probably we'll never get there uh, because of established behaviors. Uh, so what we can do is uh, fix the obvious bugs that uh, I presented at the beginning of the talk. Um, removing the macros that, at least the usage of macros that don't really make sense, like RTTOS, so that people stop copy pasting them. And finally, uh, discuss and settle on uh, how we really want uh, the TOS uh, to, to work in the long term so that uh, we can finally uh, address the root of the problem and rework the code uh, either with option one and using sparse uh, to, to, fix, to, to flag problems or using the toss mask uh, as option two or if anyone has a better option. Uh, yeah, I'd be glad to hear them. Okay, so that was uh, all I have. So yeah, I'm happy to discuss uh, the problem further and possible solutions. All right, thank you. Okay, go ahead, you were first. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, first of all, thank you for doing this work. And wow, what a mess. <laughs> um, so I, um, I like the uh, DHCPT type proposal off the top of my head, um, mostly because it kills the uh, the concept of TOS entirely. Because as you have, uh, as 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 Dave is also saying in the uh, in the chat, unless you have demonstrated here, conflating them into one byte and in and one field is really actively harmful and these bugs like especially the ECN routing bugs are really annoying to like I've, I've seen those in the wild and oh my goodness it's incredibly difficult to, to troubleshoot so I am all in favor of of doing something like this and just getting rid of like always mask out these end bits treat DHCP as something completely separate from ECN and just clean up everything and I think like uh, that goes for v6 as well like i i very much doubt that anyone is actually actively relying on actually routing on these end bits because that just breaks things <laughs> yeah yeah so i agree uh i'd really like to um uh, to clear the ecn bits every time for ipv4 and ipv6 that would make things much more consistent yeah i'm just uh 
I'm just always uh, wary of uh, unintended side effects. And I've seen uh, very weird setups into the wild uh, in my uh, previous, uh, at my previous employer, which was a small ISP. So now I don't really make, uh, I try to not uh, make any assumptions about uh, how people use the, uh, the fields or, uh, or how they use protocols because people are really very creative. So that's why I was um, yeah, a bit prudent about uh, masking the ECN. But if the consensus is masking the ECN bits, even for IPv6, I'm all for it. So I would think that if someone, so your concern is also, is someone using this actually as for policy routing, right? Like through IP. So, so my thought would be that if that really turns out to be something people want, that should be a separate field that you can like explicitly tell IP that you want to use the ECN bits, but it's not just part of the task byte. It will then be DHCP this, ECN this, and that will go into the to the routing table. Yeah, yeah, that's a possibility. Uh, if you, but I, yeah, I would be very surprised if people uh, use the ECN bits for routing on purpose. Uh, I'm more wary of um, administrators uh, who would have just uh try to do policy routing using the toss and yeah you know they want to use one toss they start with one and they don't realize it's the ecn bit so with ipv6 you can do this uh on linux and without even realizing you're breaking uh, ecn right yeah mm. i think so in any case, we can clean up the code in the kernel, right? With something like this. Um, and then at some point in the future, if we do dare to flip the default behavior in, uh, in IP, um, that could be sort of a separate thing. I, yeah, I, 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 I see your point in that people, there will probably be someone whose use cases is using this, but yeah, I don't know. ACN is also like Linux boxes by default was BGCN and spoken to, right? So people would almost have to go out of their way to, you know, I don't, I don't know. I would be surprised if this is in the wild, but um, maybe I'm just optimistic. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, it's not possible with IPv4. So, um, yeah, maybe it's really unlikely that someone did this for IPv6. Uh, it would have because... had to actually deploy IPv6 in the first place, which... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they would have to deploy IPv6 in the first place and have a different way of doing policy routing uh, in IPv4 and IPv6 because uh, this kind of trick wouldn't work for IPv4. So yeah, maybe it's safe to uh, just clear the IPv6, uh, the ECN bits in IPv6. Also, do you have any um, uh, comment about uh, allowing the higher order DSCP bits in IPv4? Uh, is it something uh, that you guys would consider safe or not? Off the top of my head, I don't see why not, but it consists just for consistency's sake, and also like, the RFCs are pretty clear that it's defined identically, right? For like 20 years. Okay, so I'll uh, weigh in here to stay Taylor. Can you go to the conclusion slide? I'm gonna plus one a lot of the discussion you guys were just having, so. Um, uh, to answer your last question, I'll go in reverse order. Yes, please allow the higher bits in IPv4, make the behavior the same, having the same behavior between IPv4 and IPv6 is a good thing, um, especially as we want people to transition from IPv4 to IPv6 to not have to, to have to change fewer things in their policy and to change fewer things in their heads and training and, and so on is a good thing. So we really want the same behavior. So 
and you're what you'd get in an ideal world, absolutely full DSCP support for IPv4. Yes, please use the higher bits too. Absolutely, please, same behavior for IPv4 and IPv6. Um, I might quibble with the wording on the second bullet. Um, TOS shouldn't break DCN. In an ideal world, we would get rid of the concept of TOS altogether. And, ta and it, there's really two different fields, right? There's the DSCP field and the ECN field. And anybody that's talking about TOS per se, in an ideal world, that would just co that concept would just go away. Okay. Now, I'm talking about the ideal world, not what you can realistically do, but in the ideal world, there would be no such thing as TOS. We wouldn't use that term. That wouldn't appear in any APIs. And of course, yes, and I want to pwn it. Okay. What we can realistically do, um, I would, yes, absolutely mask the ECN bits from anything that's using TOS now and just have anything that's using TOS right now use the DSCP bits, all of them, right? All, all, all six of them or whatever it is. Um, if somebody really has to do something because they have some weird middle box that needs some other behavior and it needs to route on ECN, gosh, I hope nobody ever does that for the reasons previously mentioned. But if they did, then you could say, well, okay, you could always do something like have an override by installing an eBPF program, right? You can have a program that can muck with the fields and put whatever you want there. So you have another out no matter what, um, but we want to incent people to do the right thing. Um, I would say as far as uh, APIs and things go, having um, exposing DSCP and ECN as separate fields or separate APIs, separate macros and stuff is a good thing, right? Get people to build the right code as they're at least porting code or writing new code or whatever. Um, you talk about, you know, removing uses of bad macros, you know, you never know what somebody else is going to do, but if you make the right macros and incent them to use that, you can deprecate APIs, you can deprecate macros, you can remove them, whatever makes sense to do in a, in a staged effort. Um, you'd mentioned that there might be some admins out there that have policy that might be relying on bugs. Um, well, that's true for just about any bug that you want to fix, right? There might be somebody that has policy or configuration that tends to be relying on that even when they shouldn't. So I wouldn't um, uh, stop that from uh, trying to push patches and things. You might want, if you have to, some configuration knob that you can uh, revert to previous behavior if that becomes an issue. Um, I don't know whether it's an issue, but otherwise, yeah, please consent people to do the right thing. And I think that's saying, you know, option one is something that's in that category because it treats uh, DSCP and ECN as completely separate fields. There's never any such thing as an 8-bit field, right? The, there might be an 8-bit value that holds a 5-bit or 6-bit or 2-bit or whatever field or whatever, uh, but there's no such thing as an 8-bit field that you're treating as actually 8 bits or any other combination that combines both DSCP and ECN. So um, that's my take on it. Thanks. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with uh, everything you said. Um, just yeah just to reiterate uh one point i made to to key is that um yeah i don't want to break existing setups and yeah that's that's really the reason why i was uh so cautious uh when uh changing the behavior um yeah and uh following what you said uh if we i if i come back to all these uh ip route and IP rules, you would consider all of these uh, examples to be bugs. Yeah, just to, yes, just to be and sure. And in, and in your IPv6 case, I would consider the IPv6 behavior that showed to also be a bug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yes, this I one. agree. That's why those are excellent examples, right? I would consider all of those to be evidence of bugs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if we really consider, if we really can consider uh, that the DSCP plus ECN uh, is the only valid in, um, interpretation uh, in the Linux kernel, this really, really simplifies the problem. Yeah, so this notion that says, you know, the toss parameter is ignored for IPv6, that's great. In the, in the ideal world, there's no such thing as a toss parameter. There's a DSCP parameter and there's a ECN parameter, but there's no such thing as a toss parameter, right? Trying to configure a uh, toss parameter would be an error because the command to configure toss is deprecated or not even present in IPv6. That would be the ideal world, right? You have to configure your rules and stuff based on DSCP or whatever. The toss as a label does not even exist for anything in IPv6. So. Just like it doesn't exist in any RFC right now, it's just an artificial construct that exists in a command right now. 
practically said. Yeah, I agree, but uh, I would go even uh, a bit further. Uh, so IP route, uh, in my opinion, uh, shouldn't have neither a TOS nor a DSCP parameter. If we want to route uh, packets based on the TOS or uh, DSCP, um, that should be done with IP rule. So for me, it makes perfect sense to not have uh, neither TOS nor, nor DSCP parameter to IP route and leave this task uh, to IP rule. And I believe that's the reason why that was never implemented in IP route, uh, actually. All right. As Jonathan was reminding in the chat, there will be a closing keynote uh, in a different track, right, at 11 a.m. in five minutes. So just wanted to remind people. Uh, if anyone has any other questions, we still have four minutes to go. Uh, I Assuming guess not. Last summary oh. is I think oh. I don't think you're hearing any support for option two. Everybody likes option number one for from people that have an opinion here. So, as, uh, hopefully that gives you a feedback that's useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the really the kind of feedback uh, I was looking for. So, um, yeah, I'll, that's I'll great. Add, but I'm I'm happy to review patches if you send them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll work on it.